Hi folks, welcome back. Today I want to take a look at this paper that the folks at NVIDIA have put out. And they're trying to make the argument that we should all be using small language models for agentic applications. Because as they say over here, small language models are sufficiently powerful, more suitable, more economical, for many agentic systems. And to their credit, they are making both sides of the argument, so they do offer some counterpoints as well. So let's get into the details of their argument. Quick note on their definition. They define a small language model as something that can fit into a common consumer device and perform inference reasonably fast for one user and in practice today that means models with 10 billion parameters or less and then an llm is anything larger than a small language model and slm the crux of their argument is that if you look at what happens in an agentic system you take a large task and break it down into a number of subtasks. And those subtasks are then given to other agents or sub-agents in the system. And the authors here are saying that these subtasks are usually less complex. And these subtasks can then be handled by fine-tuned small models. You shouldn't be using large language models for all the tasks within your agentic system. And that totally makes a lot of sense. Now, how do they support this position? The first argument is that if you look at today's small models, they are already pretty powerful. And they provide a number of data points to back that up. For example, the Phi 2.7 billion model achieves performance as good as older 30 billion models with much faster latency. And they have a number of such data points which show that the most recent small models are actually quite performant and quite fast. And the second big part of the argument is that, of course, small models are more economical. They are cheaper to serve. Their per token cost is lesser than that of large language models. As they say over here, serving a 7 billion SLM is 10 to 30 times cheaper than a much larger model, which would be in the range of 70 to 175 billion parameters. And small language models also give you a bunch of agility because you can fine tune them. They're relatively easy to fine tune. You can deploy them at the edge because they don't need huge data centers to serve them. So let's look at the other side of the argument. And to their credit, the authors do give a fair treatment of the counter argument over here. The biggest counter argument is that the larger models will always be more capable because of scaling laws. And so if you just want to get the highest performance on your task, you'll probably be better off with a larger model. And their rebuttal to this point is that, well, yes, large language models will in general be more capable, but if you can narrow down the specific task you're trying to do, you can take a small language model and fine tune it up to the point where it performs really well on that task. And this is true. Small language models, if you give them a good label data set, can perform as good or better than non-fine-tuned large language models on specific tasks. The other big counterpoint to the argument in this paper is that the large language models served by the hyperscalers like OpenAI or Google and so on will be cheaper because those hyperscalers will have tremendous economies of scale. And you can see this already because the per token costs of all the large models like 4.0 or 0.3 or Gemini 2.5 have been 
falling over the last year or two years. And on the other side, if you set up your own infra to serve small models, it's going to be difficult for you to get the same per token costs. And this is something I've learned from bitter experience because if you rent GPUs to serve small language models, your per token costs will end up being much higher than say the per token costs of a 4.0 or Gemini 2.5. So you have to factor in the cost of renting cloud infrastructure and also the engineering and opportunity cost of fine tuning a small model for your specific task. And the authors acknowledge that both of these possible worlds are equally possible and equally plausible. One where people are using lots of small models and another one where they are defaulting to just using the large models for most tasks. But I think the key point the authors have not looked into over here is product development velocity and opportunity cost. Because while it may be true that if you're wildly successful and you then notice that your API bills for the large models are becoming too high, which is a nice problem to have, you then want to optimize your LLM usage to bend towards smaller, cheaper models, or even maybe host your own SLMs on your own GPUs. However, when you're at the beginning of your product cycle, when you're still trying to develop a product, get the velocity, put it out to market quickly, at that point, I don't think it makes sense to optimize for token costs and try to optimize your setup to use SLMs and to be fine tuning SLMs. At that point, you should be using simply the largest, most capable model that gives you good performance on your task so that you can quickly find product market fit and iterate quickly. So this paper is a good snapshot of this tension between using the most capable large language models versus the small language models. And they're both improving, both in terms of performance and cost, but Another important consideration to look at is the difference in rates between those drops. My anecdotal experience has been that the per token costs of the large models, the ones provided by the hyperscalers, is falling faster than the cost for smaller models. So this is a choice that should be based more on where you are in the product life cycle how much your opportunity cost is rather than the purely technical or economical costs of using one or the other. But great paper because it makes all these arguments explicit. All right, thanks.